And for our next trick, we would like to ask a volunteer of the audience to come forward. How about Anh Sunamun, the book 8088 computer from the previous video? Welcome everybody to tonight's episode. For now I really have to show you a special trick. And tricks goes something like this. I just simply turn on this computer and as it starts to boot, I start to press escape. And I have now entered Minix 1.75's monitor. Let me somewhat increase the screen so it is easier for you to follow what is happening here. So what you're seeing here is indeed a fully functional Minix 1.7.5 system. The trouble is that it does not recognize its hard disk unless you write something like this. HD is equal to BIOS and you get into this monitor by pressing escape just like I did and afterwards you say boot. And with this little trick which I learned from some guy who was trying to get Minix running on his Tandy 1000, <laughs> one is able to get Minix onto the book 8088. I am highly impressed by this because this indicates an incredible level of compatibility. Now it is asking me to enter the date and it has a two year format. I'm not entirely sure that it is year 2000 ready. But there is one little funny trick. Every 28 years, for sure, the calendar dates repeat. Because this is exactly when the weeks start matching the year days exactly as it was like 28 years ago. In other words, it is the month of August the 21st day of the year of the Lord, 1995. And right now it is 21 o'clock, basically. Well, let's just say 21.0400. Yeah, excellent. So you see, it, it did get correctly that it's a Monday. I'm just advising you that if you have old hardware, which is not ready for dates after 2000, that you simply go for minus 28 years from whatever it is now, for in 2023 you are far enough into the future. And now, huh, that happened. No, that didn't happen this time. You know, sometimes it still eats the first column. Somehow it is kind to me and didn't eat it this time. <laughs> But uh, it, it may happen and nothing helps against it. I was googling so much for some STTY level uh, command, but there wasn't anything in it. There was no command of add a couple of spaces in the front of your terminal. So now I am root, now I am inside Minix. This is of course not who knows how greatly equipped. I'm not even sure do we have man pages, do we? Because I didn't get one for, for STTY and it would have been sort of nice. Ooh, formatting the man page for man one. Oh, <laughs> what a manly man. Well, uh, that means, oh, wow, color. I did not expect color here, I admit that. Oh, that's pretty cool. So STTY unfortunately didn't have a command. Ah, oh, gosh. Everything here is old fashioned, you need to press space. We're speaking of an operating system like 80s, 90s style. And okay, let's just press Q and get out of here. Do I have a C compiler? Yeah, I do. Oh, that's nice. Where am I? At the topmost directory. Can I go to home? Yeah, that worked. Okay, 
very well. So I am now having a fully functional Minix system. And in a moment, I shall show you how we got here. Now, while trying to figure out how to run Minix on the book 8088, I discovered that there is quite some information, but it is affected by bit rot a little bit. And it is a little hard to find anything, but there was an article from 1996, which was recommending things about running Minix in 640 kilobyte of RAM, which is what we are having. Most noteworthy of here is likely advice point four. If things get tricky, use exec. That is give up your shell and let whatever thing you are starting take its memory. Things apparently could get even harsher, as one can see here. Apparently it was possible to run the whole thing also on 512 kilobyte. And there was a whole article describing how you're doing that and what you, you have to do for a tiny root and small memory and whatnot. This minix onewoodhullcom website turned out rather useful. It was, however, only the minix-vmd.org website, which really contained the old files, which are of particular interest to our experiments. Uh, especially, look, here we're having 204, but we're having also the predecessors. The CD-ROM doesn't work. So that's what I mean with bit rot. But if you click on old, then you're getting here all sorts of stuff, you know, where, which could be of use. And if you wanted to install something like that, you know, something really ancient, perhaps that might be more what you're interested in. So you even have Minix 1.5, which is like the truly ancient thing. It also turned out to be rather hard uh to to find any anything like manual pages on old minix so really what you're left with is a lot of experimenting where i did find some manual pages is again on minix-vmd.org trouble is not everything was covered in particular not the stty utility which was of particular interest to me the STTY utility was in fact covered on minix1.woodhole.com, but that is again for a Minix 2 system, and I was interested for a Minix 1.7. whatever system. In this most desolate state of affairs, though, I discovered the repository of a certain David Given. So we meet again, Mr. Given. This gentleman has a lot of awesome stuff and very randomly I happen to come all the time across his material and he indeed had the answer to my pleading for he had this Minix 1.7 hard disk image that you're seeing here in the center. And yeah, well, I downloaded that without further installing anything and most unfancifully <laughs> I simply slammed that hard disk image onto a compa compact flash card with DD on Linux and the whole thing booted. Now one noteworthy thing one might add. Minix One is and always has been, indeed, from the very beginning, a supported file system under Linux. So, if you take out the laptop's compact flash card after you have slammed Minix onto it, then you can connect it as a normal USB device under Linux and everything will be mounted 
just like that, at least on an Ubuntu 22.04 system. In other words, you're completely free to extend the system by pasting things inside here. So, picking up right where we left, we are at home, we have slammed this disk M image onto the CF card and the CF card would be perfectly readable from Linux and you can actually use Linux in order to develop programs for Minix. Using, by the way, the Amsterdam compiler kit, which I am covering in a different series of videos. So, uh, yet to be released. Anyway, now that we're having that, do we actually have VI? I really wonder. VI high.c. Let's try that. Okay, cool. Insert. Hash. Uh, where are the Hash. Okay. And then... Oh gosh, no. Include and then um, stdio.h. You know what I'm doing, right? Well, then let's move forward and I'll just do it here. <laughs> so, there we are having a classical Hello World program. Escape, shift, colon, q. Oh gosh, yes. Uh, WQ. Yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and now CC O hi. What was this actually? Hello.c or was it hi.c? I think it was hi.c. Gosh, that takes its sweet while. Yeah, old-fashioned function definition. You don't say. I mean, you're having a C89 compatible compiler. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm generally keeping a bit old-fashioned. Wow, is that slow? <laughs> I mean, I thought the Turbo C version was slow, but this... Let, let's see. Hi. Hello. So, as you could see, one can develop for Minix, on Minix, using the C compiler. And with that, this is a Unix laptop one can only dream of. And with that, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope to greet you here soon again for further Minix explorations and other operating systems adventures and right now we will shut it down uh, how was that but it's important to see this right because if you do this yourself uh, i think sh shut down h now exactly that should have been it uh, next time we shall be trying to run dos minix that is a minix system which is running on the cf card itself in other words a system which does not require you to give up your beautiful MS-DOS 6.22 installation. So, thanks for watching. Do come again here. Until next time, have a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.